We moved to Hamilton in 1961 when I got the job as political science professor at Colgate. We quickly discovered the advantages of living in a very small, close-knit community. Hamilton, but especially Colgate, was very welcoming in those days. It was a tradition that the older faculty would always invite the younger, new faculty over immediately for either dinner or a cocktail party. And then one by one, the other faculty members would invite you. So every weekend, you were invited to somebody's house. There was actually what was called a faculty tongue every Friday afternoon at Merrill House. And the Colgate faculty would get together and have a few drinks and talk. And then a bunch of us would get together and go out to dinner afterwards for a steak dinner. And it was funny. One professor who was an economist, we would always give him the bill, and he divided it up to the penny. He owed $7.92, etc. We also developed close relationships with students. We would have students over for cider and donuts in the fall. So we built our roots in Hamilton. We raised our two sons here. And then both sets of our parents moved here when they retired. When the town of Hamilton had its 200th bicentennial, the local editor of the newspaper asked various people to write articles about one aspect of Hamilton's history. I wrote one about Hamilton government and politics. The articles were collected into a book and were buried at, in a time capsule underneath a big boulder in the village green. Later, I served as mayor of Hamilton. We had three separate projects going, developing the village green, expanding the library, and creating the new air park. We really felt very proud of what we had accomplished. Originally, however, Susan was our political star. (laughs) I ran for office, and I lost by one or a few other votes. Can you believe that? In those days, Democrats didn't win. It was all Republicans. So coming that close was really amazing. In those early days, we had the League of Women Voters in Hamilton. We studied how we could improve the downtown, and we did a lot of fun little things, like installing the benches and the lights in the village green. Uh, We found a horse watering trough that used to be where the light is right now in a... um, storage facility. We brought it out and put it in front of the village office now. It sometimes has flowers in it in the summertime. And it's it's a historical thing. Well, being at Colgate, it is very important to have relationships that go beyond Colgate. For me and Susan, those relationships are primarily our family abroad. My father was Swiss and my mother grew up in Italy. I grew up in Switzerland, and I'm still in touch with my family there. During the Second World War, my family adopted a Red Cross child from across the border. We were very close. He was Italian. His name was Mariolino. Unfortunately, he died a few years ago. I'm still in touch with his family. They live in northern Italy. And I was born in Hungary and uh, right after the war lived in Germany. I'm still in touch with my family in Hungary. Um, Now in Germany, my confirmation godmother is still alive. She's 96 and she has the most beautiful handwriting. She writes to me once a year at Christmas time and she talks about the little village where we lived for six years. We were able to combine our connections to Europe with our passion for Colgate by leading study groups for Colgate students to Geneva and Yugoslavia. Study groups played a very important role in our lives and continue so today. One time on a trip to Hungary, uh, one of our students uh, had his uh, passport stolen. So I took charge, drove him all over Budapest, took him to the uh, American consulate and the embassy, and he got a passport. Susan was my Hungarian expert. Those students from the study groups, they are very much still in touch with us. 
The first Geneva study group we took in 83, and every five years at the time of the Colgate reunions, we have a small reunion in our house. Last time they were sitting in a row around our living room, and it was like, you tell me about your story, your story, your story. And it was all very sweet. To sum up, we are lifelong Hamiltonians and lifelong members of the Colgate community, all the while maintaining a global sensibility.